Hi there, I'm Lena Anani, and you're listening to She Wrote a Book, where I interview amazing women from all over the world who also happen to be published authors. I created this show to educate, entertain, and inspire you to be the voice you want to hear in the world. Did you know this episode comes with a free gift? It's a webinar for aspiring authors who want to learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing books. You can access this free training instantly at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Now let's get started. You are listening to episode number 78 of She Wrote a Book, and today I'm interviewing Manda Pepper Longlinay, author of the book, The K-Pro. Andrea Martineau has a gift. She can make wishes come true. But when she's called to help up-and-coming actor David Stiles, Andrea can't help but wonder what she can possibly give the man who seems to have everything. Manda Pepper Longlinay is author of numerous Sherlock Holmes stories, as well as the recent espionage novel, The Fall and Rise of Peter Stoller. She is also the produced, she's also a produced playwright and screenwriter. Again, her book is called The K-Pro. You can find the link to purchase her book in our show notes for this episode at shewroteabook.com slash 78. So Amanda, it's such a pleasure to have you back as a guest. I really enjoyed speaking with you last time. Uh, my first question for you is this. Uh, why did you decide to write and publish this book? Oh, gosh. You know, I, it's so funny because I, I was like, oh, she's going to ask me that. And I'm like, I'm not entirely sure. I, the book takes place on a film set. And I think part of me, I worked, I interned on a film set. I interned on the set of Hope Floats, um, if anybody ever saw that movie with Sandy Bullock and Harry Connick Jr. Um, <clears throat> and I kind of was taking some of of that and some of my love of kind of fantasy and um, and classical history because uh, it, it has Greek gods in it. If you can imagine Greek gods on a film set, basically. Um, uh, that's kind of where this book kind of came from, these two different directions, and then it kind of flowed together into one very strange amalgam. Um, when I When I was sending it out to agents, they were like, well, it's interesting, but I just don't know what it is and and so that's why I ended up publishing it myself because I was like you know that's unfair for them to try and uh and market something that's so strange (laughs) I'll just I'll just do it so that's what I did awesome so what's what's a k-pro what exactly is that so what does that mean I I made it up but what I did was I took two of the epithets of the Greek goddess Hecate she's like this kind of She's mostly known for black magic, but in this particular instance, I've I've turned her into something more like a fairy godmother because, um, and I'm going to say this wrong, and my, my professors from my undergrad are going to be like gnashing their teeth at me. Uh, Kleidokos means holding the keys, and propylia means before the gate. And so I shortened that to K-pro, K for Kleidokos, and pro for propylia. And... Um, and basically, Andra in the book, she wears a key around her neck, and that's kind of her, the symbol of her office as this kind of fairy godmother character who can grant wishes. Um, but she gets that power from Hecate. This is awesome. I've never, ever, ever, ever thought of Hecate as a fairy godmother. I mean, I, I I've done a meditation once where she, where working with her, but it wasn't like it wasn't like dark magic or black magic. It was more of uh, shadow work and it was um, and she actually did give me some healing information in that meditation and so like for you to write about her as a fairy godmother really resonates for me I'm like geeking out over here oh no that's <laughs> awesome I love Hecate and I do feel like people tend to focus too much on the, I I like her as the crossroads person which is why I went with the you know her having the key and the gates and the the idea in the book is that Hecate can see where you want, you know, you have this wish and she can kind of see the path you need to take to get there. But she's basically a living good luck charm. And that, that comes from the fact that um, I, I had a person uh, once who was convinced that I was this good luck charm. Like he like wanted me sitting next to him during certain things because he was like, you're just, you're, there's something about you that's just, I feel like you're like this living, breathing good luck charm. And um, and it was kind of weird and kind of flattering, but kind of strange at the same time. And so in the book, Andra um, is is this creature, right? And the um, the director of the movie that 
you know, she goes onto the movie set to work with David Stiles, the director, whose name is Mac. Uh, she's, she's worked with him before, and he's like, oh, Andrew, you're here to help me, and, and, and you're here to be my, my good luck charm, and she's kind of torn. She's like, actually, I'm here for, you know, this other guy, and, and there's some jealousy there, and there's some, you know, complications. It's, it's kind of fun. It's, it's, it's all very light, I think. Very, very creative story. I love it. I, I, I think I can't wait to read it. I'm <laughs> definitely going to buy it. I'm definitely buying this one. Um, I have a question, though. Like, how, you know, most of your other books are all about the Sherlock Holmes series. Yeah. Yeah. How, what, why divert and write a completely different story? I mean, I know I, 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 know I asked you the question, like, why write, why did you write and publish this book? But my, this question is more about, like, why did you divert away from, the Sherlock Holmes series. Right. You know, and it's it's funny. I, I love writing Sherlock Holmes. Um it's mm-hmm. but it's very it's 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 a it's a very definite I feel it's very limited, right? Cuz it, it, the way I do it, you know, to make it similar to Doyle's stories, it's it's very limited to, you know, a tone and a time and a and you, there's only so much you can do without it starting to be quote unquote wrong or uh, you know, cuz you're constrained by the canon and and by what fans will and and won't accept in 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 these in, you know when it comes to Sherlock Holmes he's an established character so um I wanted to do something very different um and so I just went a completely different direction uh which may or may not have been a good idea I have no idea um but it was fun to write it was just very freeing to write something so different I can imagine. That's awesome. So that's that's fantastic. I'm glad I asked you that question because it 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 makes perfect sense after I hear you say that you know that yeah it was constraining to write under Doyle constraints and it yeah. just makes perfect sense. That's awesome. Do you feel like you might be writing a sequel to this book? Actually, yes, I I might. So um, every April there's this blogging challenge. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called the A to Z blogging challenge. And um, a couple years ago I participated and I was just kind of playing with the K-Pro idea. Um, I was playing with a possible sequel. And uh, that sequel is loosely or, or tentatively titled Ms. Fortune. Um, it, it has Andra and David in it. Uh, in one, you know, but it, it introduces a couple new characters. Um, one who who works in in Hollywood and is kind of this. Again, she she's known to to basically make or break careers. Um, and then uh, this you know eager young actor who's desperate for her to 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 do it for him, and she's just like she she's kind of she's kind of backed out of it uh, after a. a something bad had happened with her last client and, and this young actor comes and, and kind of talks her into it. I, I kind of picture him as this, this young version of Hugh Grant um, or maybe, maybe Matt Smith, you know, from Dr. Who. Um, that's who I'm picturing this young actor as in, in, in the sequel. But you can find, awesome. you can find, uh, if you go, if you go on my blog, Pepper Words, um, if you, hunt back to like April of 2014 you can read like kind of the bare bones of of the story as it as it's starting and uh, I'll probably take a lot of that and uh, rework it for the for the sequel when I get around to it so cool so cool um totally random question I was looking through the preview in your uh on Amazon and I noticed that your chapters don't have chapter titles. They're all called like for example it's just chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Why did you choose to go that route? Oh, you know, I never title my chapters. I don't know why. Um that's something I've never gotten into, I guess. Um and I I yeah, I don't I don't know. I just um I feel like it's it's hard work <laughs> naming a chapter. I'm like it's bad enough I have to name everything else in the book. Uh, <laughs> but um yeah, no, I've never I've never used chapter titles. I'm trying to think and I'm just like nope, not I can't think of a single time when I have like but uh the book has chapters and then it has interludes which are flashbacks to um to Hecate in her like true goddess form, uh things that happened between her and the god Janus. Um, so there are chapters and there are interludes. Um, 
which I hope isn't too confusing for the readers, but uh, but they are headed, chapter one, interlude one, or, you know, so hopefully. That's awesome. I would imagine that the interludes actually would help the reader understand a little bit more about how, you know, how Hecate's involved in all of this. Right, yeah, well, that was, you know, the original draft didn't have the interludes, and, and somebody was like, I kind of want something to pull it together. I think, you know, somebody was critiquing, reading, giving me feedback. And I was like, okay, well, you know what, let's go explore that a little bit. And, um, and that was, uh, I think, it, I think it does help the story. I think it gives a little bit more depth to what's going on. Otherwise, it, it, it's kind of confusing when you start talking about a person who has a goddess living inside her and a person who has a god living inside him. And, you know, you're like, okay, this is, this is getting complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Awesome. So, Amanda, um, curious to know. I know I asked you this question in the last episode. I'm curious to get the answer again. Might have evolved. Who knows? Uh, what do you love most about being an author? I, oh, you know, I love, I love meeting people who don't exist, <laughs> which sounds crazy, but, um, but there's something really just fascinating about character to me I love the depths of of people I love the depth of real people as well but sometimes they're harder to get to know you know a a character at least I can kind of drill down into them um psychology is really interesting to me and and so the psychology of even fictional people um really kind of inspires me and I use I usually allow character to decide where a plot is going to go as opposed to creating a plot and then plugging characters in because I think a well-rounded character is so important to to good writing. Beautiful, perfect answer. I love it. So, Amanda, thank you so much for being our special guest today. We will have a link to your book in the show notes for this episode, and our listeners can find that at shewroteabook.com slash 78 to learn more about our author and her awesome book. Thanks again, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you for listening to She Wrote a Book. If you enjoyed this episode, then subscribe now so you can automatically get access to all new episodes and feel free to share your inspired thoughts with us in the comments too. I'd love to hear from you. Are you ready to write your own book? Get started now with my quick and concise webinar so you can learn my insider secrets on writing and publishing your own book. Claim your free gift now at shewroteabook.com slash bonus. Until then, may you always feel good and make magic. Feel good, make magic now. Lena Anani will show you how. Ignite that wisdom inside of you. And show the world what you do. To publish, write, and promote. Learn the best way to go. OMG, do it now. Lena Anani will show you how.